Richard B. Russell Library for Political Research and Studies was dedicated in 1974 and opened for research in 1977. Initially, the library documented the work of the late U.S. Senator Richard Bavard Russell. But over time, the mission evolved and the number and range of collections grew tremendously, making the Russell the first library in the Southeast to focus exclusively on documenting political history. Today, the Russell is recognized as the Library of Record for Politics and Public Policy in Georgia. The man behind the Russell Library, Richard Bavard Russell, devoted his life to public service. He went to the Georgia State Legislature in 1921 at the age of 23. Possessing a keen interest in the finer points of parliamentary rules and a peerless work ethic, Russell had a meteoric rise. The duties devolving upon me are approached with a heart that is humble by a consciousness of the responsibilities which accompany this exalted trust. By 1933, the year he went to the U.S. Senate, Russell had been Speaker of the House and Governor of Georgia. He served in the Senate for 38 years. As Secretary of State Dean Rusk once noted, for 20 of those years, Russell was the most important and influential person in U.S. government, second only to the presidents with whom he served. As Chair of Armed Services and later the Appropriations Committees, Russell had enormous power and understood its accompanying responsibility. In large measure, he determined the agricultural and defense legislation considered by the Senate, as well as matters affecting the federal budget. During the 20th century, Russell, along with Georgia's Carl Vinson in the U.S. House of Representatives, was undeniably among the nation's foremost experts on military and defense policy. In acknowledging Russell's extraordinary and lengthy service to his state and country, his stand on civil rights cannot be ignored or glossed over. Like many of his Southern colleagues, he defended segregation and opposed civil rights legislation. He quickly became leader of the Senate Southern Bloc and for three decades stymied all civil rights legislation. But we're speaking now about the heavy hand of the federal government. We're speaking about federal compulsion. And this compulsion on private property is not only in the FPPC, it's in the uh, so-called public accommodations clause. Exactly. Where it's also in the voting the, rights clause. The heavy hand of, uh, well, I must concede that any law that has uh, applies to voting rights could be properly called a civil rights bill whether it's constitutional or not. But I By 1964, however, American society and the U.S. Senate itself had changed dramatically and the strongest civil rights bill up to that time passed overwhelmingly. Once the Civil Rights Act of 1964 became law, Russell urged compliance and counseled against any violence or forcible resistance. He was the only opponent of the bill to do so. Russell's stand on civil rights was costly to the nation and to Russell himself. It contributed to his defeat in a bid for the presidency, distracted him from other legislative and appointed business, limited his ability to embrace innovation, weakened his health, and tainted his record historically. Civil rights is one aspect of the senator's legacy and his times that we can learn from today. Russell's love of the Senate and its traditions was most evident in his own example of conduct and leadership. He earned the respect and admiration of his most ardent opponents for his integrity, intellect, modesty, and fairness. The impact of Russell's career and the respect his career demanded made the Russell Library possible. As a center for research and study of the modern American political system, the Russell Library documents representative democracy with particular emphasis on the role of Georgia and the U.S. Congress. In that context, the Russell Library is home to over 300 collections from organizations and national, state, and local public servants, activists, journalists, and writers. Their papers provide an interconnected framework for understanding the increasingly diverse people, events, and ideas shaping modern Georgia's political landscape. Senator Russell once said, look to the past as a means of weighing the future. Russell's reminder of the power and presence of history guides the library, gallery, and special collections building named for him. History lives in the Russell Library. That's something we believe Senator Russell would have wished. Welcome to the gallery of the Richard B. Russell Library for Political Research and Studies. I'm Cheryl Vogt, Director of the Russell Library. 
We're very happy to have you here today. We hope you enjoy your day with us and that we'll see you again.